زكاتك تدفع عنك البلاء وتحفظ ما لك أن أقام الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to the fifth part of the short series on contemporary laws related to zakat. Today we will be discussing zakatable assets and in particular we will be discussing how to calculate zakat on inventory or trading stock. Now inventory is known as or defined as any commodities that are purchased for the purpose of resale for profit. So if you're in a business and your business is to buy and sell a particular type of good, those goods will be considered as inventory. If you're in a home industry and you buy and sell certain products, those products that are purchased with the intention of resale will be considered as inventory. If you buy and sell vehicles, for example, or homes or apartments or buildings, if that's your business, then that would be considered inventory for your zakat calculation purposes. Inventory is valued annually for the purposes of zakat, and this will be done on your annual zakat date. Now, there's different types of inventory. You have the finished product, uh, and there's certain valuation methods that we would use for the finished product. You would have work in progress, where if you're a manufacturer, you've got partially manufactured goods. If it's possible to get a market value for that, then you could use that. Alternately, in many cases, it's not possible, and therefore you would use the cost for work in progress or whoop. Then you might have some damaged or obsolete stock where the stock was purchased at a certain value, but it's now either slow moving, it's unable to sell or it's become damaged and the value is actually dropped below the cost. In that instance, you would use the lower realizable value for that stock for Zakat's valuation purposes. Goods in transit is, is an interesting one because it depends on who the owner of those goods are. So this could affect you as a seller and it could also affect affect you as a buyer of goods. Now, there's certain uh, shipping terms that affect the risk and rewards of ownership from a conventional uh, or commercial perspective. And we need to look towards those to understand when those goods are in transit, perhaps they may be on the water or they may be uh, tra being transported uh, on the ground or by air, who is the owner of those goods? In some instances, the ownership and the risks and rewards of ownership remains with the seller until such time as it is physically delivered to the buyer's premises. So in that case, the seller would need to include the value of those goods in their Zakat calculation. But in other instances, for example, where you have an X works term, the goods actually move out of the seller's ownership um, immediately when it leaves their premises and it now moves into the ownership of the buyer. So if those goods are on the water or on the ground at that point in time, it would need to be included in the Zakat calculation of the buyer. Now, any goods that have been purchased for personal use would not be included in one's Zakat calculation, even if you subsequently decide to sell those items. So you have a car, you've bought it for personal use, and then you decide to put it on the market for whatever reason, the, the value of that car would not be included in your zakat calculation as your intention initially was for personal use. Now, zakat should be paid in cash uh, generally, and that's what it is paid in cash. It is permissible to pay zakat in kind as well. So you could pay it out of the stock that you have. And one of the uh, global accounting and, and Sharia standards bodies known as IOFI, they advise that when it's a recessionary economy, you look at what is unfa'al al-fuqara, what is most beneficial to the poor. If at that point in time, in kind is going to be more beneficial, then it's better to, to pay it in kind. Or if cash is going to be more beneficial, then you pay it in cash. But both would be permissible. Now, what value should be used with regards to stock and particularly finished goods? Right Now, you've got three types of values. You've got the cost that you paid for the goods. You have a market value, um, which you could sell the goods for. It's the selling price. The cost is not permissible to you. So you cannot value your goods, your finished goods, at cost for the cart purposes. That would be too low, except if, of course, the value of the, the goods uh, is obsolete and the value is now below cost or it's damaged. The market value is a permissible value that you could use, the selling price of those goods. That's a permissible value that you could use. The ulama have also mentioned that a 
bulk sale price could also be used as a benchmark. Now, the bulk sale price would be if you had to take all the goods that you had and you had to sell them at one point, the value would probably be lower than the market value that you would sell them individually at, right? But it would be higher than the cost. So, you know, it could also almost be a wholesale uh, uh, selling price depending on the industry that you are. So that is also a permissible proxy that can be used. And usually what happens in this situation is that the cost is used, the general retail markup is then looked at, and then something a little bit lower or in between the cost and the general retail markup would be used to have a bulk sale price. It's important to note that we only look at the value of the goods transport and other costs, which sometimes may be capitalized, especially in more complicated businesses, those would be excluded for purposes of zakat. This brings us to the end of this segment, which looked at how to value stock for uh, an inventory for zakat purposes. Inshallah, we will continue with the next set of assets. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.